Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's time to uh, have another session on uh, R and uh, data science and computing science. My name is Dmitry Garadnichian. I'm a, a research scientist with the Canada Board Services Agency. So today we will be wrapping up everything we have done. Last time uh, we have developed with you the apps which can uh, visualize the COVID data from the United States. So uh, thank you again for all of you who have, who have been regularly joining uh, the, these sessions um, and uh, watching them uh, perhaps offline. We have uh, progressed quite a lot in two months. So this is our ninth session. And uh, what I would like to do today is to just recap the key points which uh, were shared in those sessions. So I will start sharing my screen with you uh, right away. And uh, we will just review what we have done with you in those two months. So again, I need to watch two screens at the same time. You should see right now our homepage, our 101 learning R together. And I'll be watching chat and uh, participants. Uh, so I need to approve them as they uh, join here. So again, we have uh, uh, progressed quite a lot in two months. So we have developed a page to, uh, to collect this information for people who are interested in ARM. In the resources page, we have listed a number of resources which you can use yourself to teach yourself. There are many, many resources, uh, learning capabilities to train yourself in ARM. Now, what I was trying to do here is to provide a slightly different perspective on much of the knowledge which is already on the web. A little uh, sort of um, technique approach which could help you probably to organize your codes in such a way that uh, it will be easy for you to code in a what we call a modular way. So this is the page where you will find all resources and they will be updated regularly. Now in uh, page R101 we have developed a directory where we keep all our codes and last time we have built with you the code which is actually right here so i will click on this code and we will open it also the app which we have developed with you last time is now actually live you can watch it by clicking on this link so and we will review what we have done there But again, let's just go back to the basics where we have started. We have started approaching data science from a computer science perspective, making our codes modular. So in the computer science, there is a, a joke who is saying that uh, there are only three numbers in the computer science. It's one, two, and infinity, because if you need to repeat more than twice, you will write a uh, code a function which will just you can run as many times as you wish so and this is why the concept of modular programming becomes very important and then we talked about how important it is to name properly your variable functions and to have a table of contents and think first algorithm or strategy what you'd like to do so it's good to analyze the data but really what would you like to get out of this program. So we start the programming with you in rstudio.cloud and uh, I know that many of you are now uh, we have your account here and you can uh, log in there and we have created a workspace here which is where we program and let's just go quickly 
through the files which we have developed with you so far. So remember, in the files window in here, that's where you will see all your files. So in our first sessions, we talked about organizing our codes in blocks. Like for example, you can use if statement and then you can execute it just in one click, the entire portion. So control enter will execute this entire portion. Then we talked about writing functions and naming them properly. Look, so the name is almost the same and it has the same prefix read, then geo, then uh, COVID US data. So we're written functions with you. We talked about how you can visualize different components of your data. You need to understand the data. You need to get to know the stranger. So it's no longer a stranger to you. It's uh, really something which you know very well uh, about its properties, what are the names on different columns. And we developed a function there. It's like a good example of modular programming. You encapsulated it in a function and then later you can uh, you can use it. Now I showed you how you can test it. You would normally have maybe like a function called test me where you can just run all your things which you would like your computer to, to do for you. You just do it yourself here. And we were doing all that and once uh, our code runs well we started writing with you our markdown file. So our markdown files will generate you a document out of the text. And in this text, you can embed chunks. So these are the chunks. And we talked about the importance of table of contents. You can see the table of contents in here. You can jump from one chunk to another. Then we showed another way of developing our markdown as a dashboard. And not just a dashboard, which could be static, which we have developed with you as well. It was a file which we called the one the dashboard. And you would see it has in, in here. So it has a flex dashboard uh, option. So it will, it will create an HTML file out of it. And then by adding Shiny, we were able to make it interactive. So last time we finished this file with you and let's run this file now and see what it does. And here in the table of contents, you see exactly what pages we have there. It's very convenient. You can click on any of these pages and see exactly the code. So we'll run this code. And again, the code now is all code is in here, right? So, and in fact, now the code also, as I mentioned, I put it in uh, in this location, in this URL location, and you can actually click there, and you will get into the code live in here. And it's a very functional code. It will show you on a map and as a table and as a graph for any province of a state. And you can control a number of different parameters here. So let's say you can select uh, Florida here and you will see the result of Florida. And you will see I have made it a little change here. So it shows now the reproduction rate of growth. It shows where the production rate of growth is more than one, meaning it keeps expanding. It keeps accelerating. And uh, you see that in states in most places it still keeps accelerating. Yeah. So, and you can control the number of cities to be shown here. Now in, uh, in our plots, you can control number of days, which you would like to, to be shown. So you can see the dynamics of uh, the pandemic and you can keep the scale constant or not. So all this code is now is there. Now let's go back to our code here. 
because what we can do now, we can actually, we can compare our app to another app, and there are many apps which have been written. So I will open one of the apps which actually inspired me to start doing something for COVID myself. It's an excellent work from uh, another data scientist. So I will open it here. It's a great page. It uses uh, the same John Hopkins University data set. And you would see it has a very similar layout. And even more, it has a source code right there. So you can actually, you can cut and paste it right now into your rstudio.cloud and just run it. Now, let's quickly examine what this code is doing. You would see it also has a map, slightly different layout though. It has trends also. So similar to what we're doing. Our code is somewhat is maybe simple, so it's easier to understand. And in about, you would see the code is right here. So you can go there and you can see the code and you can actually copy this code. And this is something which I wanted to talk today about that you can make a copy of this entire project from your RStudio.cloud in here. You can say, create a new project from Git repository. And you will just type it in here and it should work. So it will create you a copy of that project. So you will be able to take any project which is uh, on GitHub and make a copy of it. And you can run it and you can explore it. So in fact, this is what uh, I encourage you, invite you to do. You can uh, take this repository of our, our auto portal and uh, you can contribute many of those resources yourself here. So let's see if it has finished. Yeah, so it finished uh, Uh, make any copy and now you know what to do. So you've been here before you you know that you need to install directories and you will need to give it a name for this project. So we will call it with the name on the top. So that's how you could create a copy of any project on GitHub. And what is important here, you would see here this button. It means Git. What it does, uh, it tracks changes. So when you open RMD file, and now you're familiar with RMD file, right? And if you make any change, let's say here, you will say, you know, maybe draft. So you would write something and then when you click on git and you click commit it opens the page and it will show you the changes so the changes where you were the file where you made the change and you can uh, keep track of those changes so it's very important for yourself and also when you contribute code to others you can say commit and uh, if you are uh, fine with GitHub, it will allow you to commit. So that's one thing which uh, I wanted to share with you. This is uh, a very important tool, GitHub. Now let's go back to our R101. We talked about the importance of creating modular code. So in our case, our RMD has become very large, right? And uh, in fact, you would think, why not to develop the same app, exactly the same app, but not for US data, but let's say for Canadian data or for Ukraine data or France data. Sure, why not? And that's the key point of computer science approach that you take code, you in, encapsulate it in a chunk. And we talked about that, how you can do it using functions here. And then how you would call this function for the entire code using source. 
Now I would like to show you how you can also source or use the chunks, codes from elsewhere for RMD. Not for RC, but for R markdown. So I made, actually that's, I made the comment right here. So this is the line which you need to use here. So I'm making Control C here and going back into here. And I will just paste this line in here. So you will see what I will be doing. I need also to do this and this. So what this line is doing, it will take the code from a file named this. And this is just a label. So the label that you can click on it in here and it jumps in here. So now I can take this entire code, huge code, which we ideally would like to reuse many times. I will cut it from here. I will go now to, I will create new markdown. We've done it with you a few times. It creates new markdown. I will delete everything here. Control V. So I selected the entire portion, which we want to be reused. And uh, I will call this file like that. So we'll let's give a name, file save as, okay, let me see, okay, no questions so far, so let, indeed, uh, I'll just finish uh, the entire process so that you can follow later when you watch it on YouTube here. Okay, so we copied this whole content into a file. And now we can run the same file. Look, okay, so we run. And if we didn't make any mistakes, it should uh, run. So what is important in here is that we essentially, we split the code into portions. And now, you see it runs. So now, if you want here to use not US data, but let's say Canadian data, you will have just to replace this line and everything else will be the same. So this is uh, how you would divide your R markdown file into portions, different sub file, which you can then, you can source them like that. So we talked about where you can seek for help if you have any questions, there's help here. And another very important source here is a uh, stack overflow stack overflow so if you have any question here on anything you can just you can ask it right here and i use it all the time here myself so now you would see in here i have a few other pages uh just for today today is uh, the 5th of june so we are all living in uh, quite a special moment of uh, our history uh, it's, uh, of course, the crisis with COVID, mm, and uh, there was a talk today, live talk by His Holiness uh, Dalai Lama, uh, talking about you know the need to help each other and for compassion, and uh, really people are here to help each other. So this is what I've been trying to do myself. Really, I'm just doing it uh, sort of uh, on my own initiative, and I think maybe this is a good time right now to wrap up pretty much everything what we have talked about in two months you have now something which is functional you have entire code you have a live app you know now how to uh, divide your code in uh, chunks or portion functions or are marked down um, portion so Last time we didn't talk much about that, but I started using Plotly. Uh, Plotly function is a, it's a function which is used here by this data scientist in here in his uh, map. So it uh, allows you to uh, to go with your mouse and uh, you see it's interactive here. So, and uh, I have added it in our last code in here. So in here there is 
page, I call it interactive plot. And it uses plot link package. So you see, it allows you just to move cursor and it will show you uh, the information right there. So now you will be able to do that as well. Let's again refresh uh, our memories on what else we have done here. So we talk about naming uh, how to call uh, variables. It becomes very handy, in fact, uh, when you code using some uh, and variables which will allow you later to understand what these variables are. Like for example, in here, when I open my environment here, I would be able to see all my functions here, which do read you know, or which do something else. And the same in here. And what is important, they're sorted. They're always sorted by prefix, right? So it's important for you to have a prefix which allows you to, to easily locate and understand what the variables are. So let's see what else we have done here. So we have, uh, uh, so this will probably stay there for quite some time. We had uh, nine sessions right now. Probably this will be now our last session, at least for this uh, work. And uh, I would like to uh, just maybe if there is interest to talk more about machine learning and AI. AI is more than just machine learning. It's also simulation, it's also game, gaming, it's uh, operations research, it's uh, expert systems, it's developing of bots, intelligent bots, which can provide you recommendations here. Yeah. And there are many good packages which have been developed over the last 10 years, because uh, TensorFlow is a huge package which allows you to build very complicated neural networks. And there is a tidy models package here, which allows you to program models and some machine learning models in a very uh, natural way, pretty much like what we were coding with you right now using this pipeline operator. You would be using, you would be able to use the same to build models here. So, and maybe again, we'll build something else. Like if you um, have any ideas what you would like to build, we can use this time to build something here. So let me see if there are any questions at this point. Now, if there are no uh, questions, again, I would like to thank all of you for supporting this initiative, for being here with us. On a final note, again, today is a lunar eclipse, and they say it's a special event in the, on, for our humankind. Uh, we're moving into the new stage where there is opportunity for um, big major changes either for good or for worse so let's hope they're all for good where humans get to make our uh, community better so I invite you maybe to listen to uh, Dalai Lama maybe to watch uh, tutorials from our many web pages listed in the resources here you will see these uh, wonderful resources uh, with good examples and if you have any questions at any point, we can talk offline or online. So again, let me see if I have uh, anything else to do. Let me check if you have any other questions. Seems like things are progressing well. So maybe then uh, that's good time to uh, wish uh, you again, please stay safe. Please uh, ventilate your living area. Uh, so uh, support each other, keep the distance. And now you can also use your app to monitor situation in US. You can build the same app for uh, Canada, for any other country, or use the app which I have developed myself, which integrates COVID data from all uh, different countries using the John Hopkins University data set and the University of Toronto uh, data set. And uh, yes, so maybe 
while it is loading the data. It shows up the data today for Canada. Uh, let's see how we're doing. Statistician is improving. That's very good. Uh, we can see, okay, there's some areas where still accelerating. Indeed, in Ontario, right? In Niagara Falls, in New York. Unfortunately, uh, you can see the trends here and tables. So now you see it's a very similar layout. And uh, here I was doing some modeling here so you can uh, forecast how it uh, progresses later. So now you should be able to develop something like that uh, yourself. So thank you. I wish you have a good summer. Please take care of yourself and your friends, relatives, and everyone around you. Thank you very much.